we are going to find the Laplace transform of a piecewise function. So here we have f of t is defined as sine t when t is in between of 0 and pi, and it will be 0 when t is greater than pi. When the function is defined piecewisely, we have to use the definition of Laplace transform. Namely, we have to write this as integrals, all right? So this right here, the first integral will be going from 0 to pi. So let's put that down, 0 to pi. And we still have that e to the negative s t, and we multiply by whichever that function is. Namely, we have the sine t for the first part. And then we have the dp still, like that. And then we will be adding this with the second integral, which it goes from pi to infinity, because it says t is greater than pi. So we have pi to infinity, right? And we still have e to the negative s t times whichever this function is, which is 0, which is going to be super, super easy. Okay, notice that here, 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 they didn't have any equal sign, right? But it's okay, because this function right here is piecewise continuous, and it's going to work out nicely. And also, notice that the first integral, this is not a proper integral at all, because the limit is just going from 0 to pi. So we can totally get the answer for that, right? And right here, Yes, this is the improper integral part, but it's super easy because it's just zero anyways, right? Anyways, this is what we have to work out. So let's do it on the side. We have to figure out the integral of this, right? So let me just put it down right here. We have to figure out what's the integral of e to the negative s t times sine t dt, okay? And to integrate this, we have to use integration by parts. And of course, let's do the di method. So let's put on d and i, some plus, minus, like that, OK? I am going to differentiate e to the negative st. It doesn't really matter which one you choose, but let me just differentiate this right here. And let me integrate sine t right here. And let's get to work. Differentiate this one time, we get e to the negative st, and then we have to multiply by negative s. And then differentiate this again. We keep this first, e to the negative st, and then we multiply this by negative s. So it will be pass the s squared. And by the way, all these right here are s, okay? It's not 5. Right here, integrate sine t. First time we'll get negative cosine t, and then do it again. The integral of cosine t is pass the sine t, but it was negative, so you maintain that negative right here, okay? We stop right here because the function part, e to the negative st, sine t, repeats from the first row. So we stop. OK, diagonals, diagonals, the product of the diagonals are the answers, right? So first, we will have this times that. Let me write it as negative e to the negative st times cosine t. And then be really careful with the second one. Negative negative is positive times another negative is negative. And this is the s, OK? <laughs> and this is the sign, <laughs> the s inside of the sign. But anyways, this is s. And then we have e to the negative st. And then this is the sign of t, like that, OK? So far, so good. And here is the last part. Remember, the product of each row it is still an integral, positive times negative. This is going to be a minus, because once again, minus times positive. We are going to subtract integral, and then we have this times that, which is s squared, e to the negative s, t, and then we have sine t, dt, like that. As you can see, the function part was this and that match. What we'll do is we just add, and let me put down, let's add s squared. If you imagine you put s squared in the front, s squared and the integral, e to the negative s, t, sine of t dt, so that you see this and that will cancel. We do that right here as well. We add s squared, and that's integral. Okay, this is s, this is integral, this is 2. Anyways, this is e to the negative s t, sine t dt, they match, and that's this part that we have on both sides. Okay, right here, this is technically a 1. So if you combine these two together, you just have 1 plus s squared, and then multiply that by the integral, e to the negative s t, sine t dt. And this is equal to that, right? This is the answer part already. So we have negative e to the negative s t, cosine of t, minus s e to the negative s t, sine of t. At the end, divide everything by 1 plus s squared, right? So uh, let me just write it like this.
Anyways, this is the result that we need. We have to plug in this right here. So, as you can see, and especially this is not in proper integral, so I don't need to write it down as a limit. This is just going to be, uh, let me put that down right here, negative st, negative e to the st, negative e to the st, negative e to the negative st, cosine t, over 1 plus s squared, and we have that as well. So we have the minus s e to the negative st times sine t over 1 plus s squared, right? So this is the result that we have. Okay? And we are going to be plugging values from 0 to pi, and that will be wonderful, isn't it? So I will do this right here for you guys. And I'm going to erase this right here. Okay, this right here represents the first integral, right? And as I mentioned earlier, the second one is super easy because 0 times this is just all 0. And when we integrate 0 from pi to infinity, you still get 0. There's no area under 0, right? So if you would like, you can just say plus 0 right here just to make this more specific. Okay, so right here I was just plugging pi into all the t's and then plugging 0 into all the t's and then subtract, subtract. So we are going to have Okay, um, let's see, this one is pretty easy. Sine of pi is zero, so the whole thing, because this times that times that, so it's all zero, so this is gone, this is just zero. Likewise, sine of zero is also zero, so the whole thing right here is just zero as well. Okay, how about what's cosine of pi? This right here is negative one, negative one times this negative. So for the first part, negative times negative become positive. Therefore, we have positive e to the negative s pi over 1 plus s squared. This is what we have. For the next one, cosine of pi, I mean 0, <laughs> is equal to positive 1. And we have negative, negative, so become positive. So let's put on plus. And this is just well, 0 times that is just 0, and e to the 0 is just 1, so we have that on the bottom, right? So 1 over 1 plus s squared. And if you would like, you can see that they have the same denominator, so I can just put them together as e to the negative s pi plus 1 all over 1 plus s squared. Pretty fun, isn't it? And as you can see, did we have to set a condition on s in order to make this a convergent integral? No, we didn't, right? Because this was the improper integral part, and it was so nice, it was just zero right away. So for this right here, there is actually no condition on s. So this is true for all s value. That's it.